The Republic of China or Taiwan has a long history of making its own armored vehicles based on originally American designs. This goes back all the way to the 1970s and the Wancheng program is a major part of these roots. Welcome to this Tang Encyclopedia video treating a subject barely ever covered on the English-speaking internet. The Taiwanese Wancheng 4 made battle tank. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe, as well as check out our website for the full written article this video is based on, and countless others. Following the retreat of the Republic of China to the island of Taiwan, the country had received significant deliveries of US light armor in the 1950s. The main vehicles delivered by the Americans were hundreds of M24 Chaffees, M18 Hellcats, and M41 Walker Bulldogs. It was at first assumed that they would be sufficient to deal with the opposing People's Republic of China's T-3485s. But from the late 1950s onward, the People's Liberation Army started introducing the Type 59, against which the armament of Taiwan's armored fighting vehicles would prove of little use frontally. Pleas from the Republic of China to acquire more modern tanks would regularly be made to the US, but would only be met in 1973, when an ROCA delegation was able to visit the United States to negotiate the purchase of 60 surplus M48A1, two of which were equipped with dozer blades. Even then, these were already obsolete armor for American standards, with the standard M48 variant being the M48A3 at that time. The M48A5 was two years away from being introduced and the M48 family having been relegated to the role of reserves by the M60 anyway. Further sales of M48 family tanks would only happen in 1979, meaning that, for much of the 1970s, the only main battle tanks in ROCA surface were 60 old M48A1s, still equipped with the M41 90mm gun and using the Continental 650 horsepower gasoline engine. The United States Army had already introduced several variants of the M48 since the M48A1 was pressed into service in 1952. By 1973, the standard US model was the M48A3, which mostly differed in having fitted a new AVDS-1790 diesel engine, which, in addition to diesel fuel, also produced 100 horsepower more. Priority being given to the M60 line of tanks meant that, despite being introduced in the second half of the 1950s, the M48A3 was still relying on the old M41 90mm gun in 1973. In 1975, the United States finally introduced the M48A5 upgrade, which was an improvement focused on the firepower of the M48 family that was at this point only to be used by the Army National Guard units following the withdrawal from Vietnam, except a division in Korea which received M48A5s in 1978. The main feature of the M48A5 upgrade was the replacement of the 90mm M41 by the 105mm M68, which would be far more capable at dealing with Soviet armor in comparison to the older gun, and allowed current US main battle tanks to all share the same 105mm ammunition. Alongside this gun, the M16 fire control system was installed. The gun had an M13 ballistic computer with an infrared night vision light, and a new optical rangefinder. Most M48A5s would also receive a new, much lower cupola based on Israeli experience in the Yom Kippur War. Though some early examples did not receive such a feature, in general, M48A5 tanks could differ quite significantly in details, depending on which exact type of M48 they were converted from. Though local field conversions had existed in the past, including prior to the Republic of China's exile to Taiwan, Local armored fighting development was kick-started in 1975 by the Republic of China Joint Logistics Command, the service in charge of developing armored fighting vehicles in Taiwan, likely due to the change of leadership. Within this logistic command was the Army Ordnance Development Center, which itself included the Armored Vehicles Development Center. It was this last service which would start designing vehicles for the Republic of China Army. The local development which would be undertaken from 1975 onward would largely start with programs to overhaul or combine elements of American armored fighting vehicles to provide more useful armored fighting vehicles. The most well-known example of a vehicle from this era in the West is likely the Type 64 light tank, combining the turret of an M18 Hellcat, of which the hull was likely very worn out by this point, with the hull of an M42 Duster. Other early forms of indigenous armored fighting vehicle development within Taiwan, including the Type 65 light tank, an attempt to locally produce a copy of the M41 Walker Bulldog, 
and the diverse Wan Cheng program. Wan Cheng is an old-fashioned literary term which refers to the army of 10,000 chariots. This was a reference to the massive army and power of the Chinese emperor in comparison to neighboring rulers in ancient times, who were said to rather have armies of a thousand chariots. This type of references to old Chinese literature is quite common in the Republic of China. The program consisted in armored fighting vehicle designs which were created on the base of American armored fighting vehicles modified in order to improve their capacities or make them able to fulfill different roles on the battlefield. Wan Cheng 1, 2, and 3 were all M113A1 based. The Wan Cheng 1 was a 120mm self-propelled mortar, the 2 a fire support vehicle with an M24 shaft feed turret, and the 3 a multiple rocket launcher vehicle with 40 tubes for indigenous 126mm rockets. The Wan Cheng 4 differed from the previous 3 vehicle and was entirely disconnected from them in terms of features. The ROC had followed the development of the M48 series in the US and saw the introduction of the M48A5 with great interest, seeing as it was an improved version of the same M48 type vehicles it was using. The 105mm gun would be much more capable against Chinese Type 59 tanks and their further developments, but with the acquisition of new tanks from the US being a generally complicated and arduous affair, the USA was at this point improving its relation with the People's Republic of China following the Sino-Soviet split and likely did not want to threaten these evolutions by selling quantities of modern tanks to the Republic of China. The idea of recreating a similar upgrade in Taiwan blossomed. This ROC attempt at creating an M48A5 would be the Wan Cheng 4. The Wan Cheng 4 prototype vehicle was taken from one of the 60 M48A1s that the Republic of China had acquired. The vehicle was subsequently modified by the Armored Vehicles Development Center. The main modification undertaken was replacing the 90mm M41 gun with a more modern 105mm M68. Unlike with the whole thing, the Republic of China had managed to acquire at least some of these pieces from the United States. It is unclear whether the M116 gun mount which was fitted in the M48A5 was delivered alongside the M68 guns, or whether the ROCA engineers had to create their own locally. The Wan Cheng 4 reportedly also featured a night vision device that could be stored in a storage box at the rear of the vehicle. The vehicle also featured a fire control system that included a ballistic computer, infrared vision device, and a coincidence rangefinder but it has been reported as not being as accurate as the one fitted on the American M48A5. There have been claims that the Wan Cheng 4 was refitted with the same AVDS 1790 750-horsepower diesel engine as fitted in M48 models after the M48A1. The vehicle has retained the classic engine deck of the M48A1 and has not adopted the large rear plate exhaust grills of the vehicles upgraded to the M48A3 standard. However, it is known that it was possible to refit an M48A1 with a diesel engine without undertaking such a modification. Such a conversion was designed in the United States by Teledyne Continental Motors. Although it is highly unlikely these were contracted by the ROCA, it is possible a similar conversion may have been performed on the Wan Cheng 4. Alternatively, the engine refit being a mere rumor is also a possibility. Though a single M48A1 was converted, it has survived to this day and is still on display in front of the offices of the Armored Vehicles Development Center. A panel describing the vehicle can be found. On it, it is referred to merely as an M48A5, which may induce the uninitiated that the vehicle is one of these. However, looking more closely at the Wan Cheng 4, there are large numbers of different ways to identify it as a modified M48A1. The vehicle indeed features rounded fenders, which are significantly different from the rectangular fenders with two diagonal raised lines featured on later upgrades of the M48, including M48A5. Looking at the turret, one can obviously observe that the Wan Cheng 4 features the earlier high cupola type. This is not a systematically a giveaway that the vehicle is not an M48A5, seeing as a few of the first M48A5 conversions retained it but the vast majority of M48A5 replaced the higher cupola with a much lower Israeli-inspired one. The vehicle also features the headlight type featured on the M48A1 and M48A3, but not on the M48A5. 
By far the biggest giveaway of the Wan Cheng Four's original identity can be observed at the rear of the vehicle though, in the form of the original engine deck. Whether the power plant it hides is the diesel or gasoline engine is unknown, but it means that the original M48A1 engine deck was not present on American diesel M48s. A travel lock can also be found on the engine deck, added to the longer length of the M68 tank gun. There are no known internal views of the tank. It is likely that the vehicle lacks some of the changes which were brought on with the M48A5 as well, such as the new ammunition racks holding 54 rounds. So the quantity of 105mm ammunition stored in the Wan Cheng 4 is unknown. It would likely be in the region of 40 rounds. In other regards, outside of the gun, the vehicle was likely identical to the M48A1 when it comes to armor, internal equipment, and crew positions. While a single M48A1 was converted to the Wan Cheng 4 standard, the reason for the upgrade was not applied to the entire M48A1 fleet was likely not due to a fault of its own, but rather the ROC struggle at acquiring large quantities of military equipment from the US at this point in time. Although significant efforts to locally produce components would be undertaken within Taiwan, for example a local copy of the M41, the Type 65 light tank would be locally built in the same time frame as the Wan Cheng program. There were notable struggles to manufacture more advanced barrels. The local production of the 155mm XT69 barrel, a local copy of the South African G5, was notably a hurdle the ROC's industry struggled at overcoming, vastly limiting the production and entry in service of the howitzer. It is quite likely that similar issues may have prevented the local production of 105mm M68 anti-tank gun and its fitting into the M48 without the direct US support that would arrive in the second half of the 1980s. Though less advanced than the M48A5 used by the US, the Wan Cheng 4 would still likely have been an appreciated upgrade for the ROCA's tankers which had to wearily watch as the People's Liberation Army Type 59, already on the upper end of what the 90mm M41 could deal with, were progressively upgraded and supplemented by more modern tanks, such as the Type 69 in the following years. Taiwan would have to wait for the US to supply 400 M60A3 TTS tanks and support Taiwan with the manufacture of 400 CM11 tanks. M60A3 hulls fitted with locally produced upgraded M48A3 turrets armed with the 105mm M68 and fitted with the M1 Abrams fire control system, an upgrade of 50 M48s to CM12 standard, fitting them with the same turret, to equip the ROCA with 105mm armed tanks, so the experience gained in the Wan Cheng 4 did help launch the local production effort, which would later prove very useful for the local production and upgrade of vehicles, one can certainly lament the potential of having 105mm armed tanks by the late 1970s had international politics aligned more in favor of the ROC at the time. This concludes Tank Encyclopedia's video on the Wan Cheng 4. We hope you liked it. If you like foreign variants and derivatives of American tanks, tell us your favorite in the comments. Don't forget to check our website on our Patreon. And until next time, keep us in your sights.